morning to all of you. Thank you so much for the lovely introduction. And I'm going to be talking about, sorry, my topic which is from phytochemo prevention to identification of potential therapeutic targets and biomarkers for treatment of breast cancer. Now let me give you a brief outline of what I shall be talking today. I will be giving a brief talk on the literature review in relevance with my research work which will involve breast cancer, its frequency, its occurrence, etc. And then I shall be talking about conventional medicine and some of its methods that's been currently employed to treat breast cancer and also the challenges that conventional medicine faces in its treatment procedures. And then I shall talk about my research work which is complementary alternative medicine and discuss how it supports conventional medicine. And I shall be briefly touching upon nutrigenomics and nutrigenetics. After which I shall be talking about the crux of my project which is a hypothesis and substantiate my hypothesis using my methodologies and then move on to the results, summary and future work and acknowledgement. Now, breast cancer as we all know is the most common cancer amongst females worldwide. In 2005, breast cancer caused about 502,000 deaths worldwide and accounted for about 7 percentage of cancer deaths. According to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, in 2009, in US alone, the number of patients that were women uh, that were diagnosed were about 211,731 and about out of which 40,676 of them died. The American Cancer Society's estimates for the breast cancer in US for this year is about 232,670 new cases with an estimated 40,000 deaths. In Oman, breast cancer has a tendency to affect very young females of age groups ranging between 25 and 40 years with no family history whatsoever. We see several of such young people being admitted in our Sultan Qaboos University Hospital on a regular basis. According to the statistics from the Oman Ministry of Health from the year 2010, the frequency of breast cancer incident cases amongst Omani females is about 25.40%. The heterogeneous nature of breast cancer causes several challenges for conventional medicine treatment. Speaking of which, there is no ultimate cure for cancer through conventional medicine alone so far. Some of the widely used treatment methods involve surgery and systemic treatments including cytotoxic, hormonal and immunotherapeutic agents. These systemic treatments are active at the beginning of the therapy in about 90% of the primary breast cancer patients and in about 50 percentage of metastasis patients. However, after a variable period of time, progression occurs. And at this point, resistance to the therapy is not only common but also expected. We are strong believers of the fact that a partial failure in trying to find a complete cure for the treatment of cancer is due to a lack of understanding of specific molecular and cellular mechanisms of breast cancer development within the various groups of patients. Also, this in turn has led to the failure of clinical trials and current therapies to cure breast cancer. Another important challenge or let's say the fear faced by the breast cancer patients involve the drug resistance challenge. Therefore, new prognostic factors are needed for early detection and to guide the development of targeted therapies. All these shortcomings of conventional medicine have made people to shift their focus towards other alternatives. And my research work is based on one such alternative, which is the complementary alternative medicine or otherwise called as CAM. This can be defined as therapies used in addition to, that is complementary or instead of standard treatments in conventional medicine. CAM has evolved over thousands of years and is widely practiced around the world. There are increasing evidences, not only through practice, that is general practice or book evidence, but also through increasing amounts of scientific evidence. CAM has existed nearly since the origin of mankind. For instance, the Ayurvedic medicine from India has been practiced for nearly 5000 years and the Chinese herbal medicine for nearly 23 centuries and that speaks volumes. This website here is that of a school of homeopathy in UK which is accredited by the Society of Homeopaths and it offers several diploma programs in the UK in homeopathy. And as we all know in Europe, homeopathy is the most commonly practiced camp, uh, especially in countries like UK, Switzerland, Spain, etc. 
The NIH, which is a National Institute of Health in the US, has a special division just dedicated solely to CAM and they involve in research work and dissemination of data to the public. This website says it all. It shows the growing importance and relevance of CAM. Now, let me show you a literature review of some of these compounds. One area of particular research interest in CAM has been the identification of naturally occurring compounds and the active ingredients in them and to test these active ingredients efficacy against the treatment of cancer. These are some of the naturally occurring compounds and their active ingredients and their mechanism of action. Friends, please believe me when I say this is just the tip of the iceberg. This list is in fact quite huge and new compounds are being added to it on a regular basis. Moving on, nutrigenomics is a newly emerging field that employs genomics, proteomics and metabolomics to better characterize the relationship between diet and health and that's all we've been discussing since yesterday. It identifies a molecular relationship between nutrients and genes to understand how dietary changes can affect human and animal health. This figure here is a flow chart that represents the relationship between food and genes. We are what we eat and we become what we eat. That we becoming part is nothing but the influence that the nutrients have on the genome that is causing various genetic variation and susceptibility. This is the crux of my research work. We hypothesized that a combination of well documented anti-cancer compounds would synergize to increase and cause death of maximal number of cancer cells and result in alteration of gene expression of several cellular targets mediating cancer cell proliferation, motility and invasion. In my research work, what I've done is that I've taken a group of phytocompounds, the active ingredients of phytocompounds, and clubbed them together and treated the cancer cells with them. I've achieved two things in this. First and foremost, I bring about a cumulative effect of the compounds, increasing their efficiency, and number two, reduce the toxicity. Because when you use these compounds as individual treatments, you tend to use it in a higher dosage. Whereas this combination therapy I've used to the normal or the basic suboptimal dose and achieved better results than individual treatments. Let me show you the proof of that. These were some of the assays or methodologies that, I, uh, that, that are employed in carrying out my research work. The in vitro studies included cell culture and proliferation assay, cell cycle analysis and western blot analysis. I'm yet to do the in vivo studies wherein I'll be using some nude mouse models for the same and the genomic analysis involving microarray analysis and RT-PCR. Let me show you some results from my data or my data. Okay, this image here, um, I'm not sure if it's clear enough. These two quadrants show the cells, two cell lines, MDA MB231, which is a highly metastatic breast cancer cell line and the MCF10A, which is a normal breast epithelial cell line at day zero of the treatment. As you can see, the MC MDA cell lines show smooth epithelia with prominent nuclei. Whereas, 24 hours after treatment, you can clearly see that the breast cancer cell line has shown death. That is, the cells started to round up, you know, display membrane blibbing and started floating in the petri dish. Whereas, the MCF10A cells, which are the normal breast epithelial cells, remained unaffected at the same conditions even after 24 hours of the treatment. This here is a cell culture and proliferation assay of the MDA cell line with my 7 combo treatment after 24 hours using an Alama blue assay. Now, Alama blue assay, I'm not sure how many of you are aware of it because most commonly people use MTT assay, but the advantage of Alama blue is that it's non-toxic at very, and you used to, you just have to use a very low dosage. The principle, oh sorry, uh, the principle behind the Alama blue dye is that the dye uses the natural reducing capacity of the living cells. And what it does is these live cells convert the resazurin to a fluorescent compound risorophin. And that it's uh, emitted and it's read using a fluorimeter. Here, the first nine columns as you can all see are the control, the vehicle control and the individual treatments. The pink cells indicate live cells, that is it has had no influence whatsoever. Whereas the blue cells, the blue wells indicate dead cells. This is the 7 combo treatment. Now the treatments that I used, the vehicle control was a 70% ethanol 
and the individual compounds that are used were indole 3 carbinol, uh, resveratrol, curcumin, genistein, quercetin, phycocyanin and crocin. All these individual compounds at their individual dosage levels did not show any effect. The cells were proliferating and fine, whereas the 7 combo showed good killing. This is a graphical representation of the previous plate and as you can see the controls and the individual compounds are more or less proliferating at the same rate, whereas the 7 combo the dish has been wiped out and it is clean or in other words it has showed maximal death. This is the control which is the MCF10A breast epithelial cells and the entire plate is pink including the individual and the combo treatment showing that the treatment in combination has had no effect whatsoever on the normal breast epithelial cells. And I have carried out the if you notice I carried out the experiment in the same order that I used for the MDA cells you know the same order control vehicle control the individual compounds and the 7 combo. And this again is a statistical representation of the same and all the cells of the normal breast epithelia are proliferating normally. Let us now move on to the western blot analysis. This table here is a gene function summary of some of the genes that I used to test my western blot analysis. <sighs> Sorry, I am I'm carrying a little one here and I tend to get a little out of breath, <laughs> kindly excuse me. Uh, this, uh, these genes are P53 retinoblastoma CDK6 for the cell cycle and cell growth and then the P53 BACs and the BCL2 for apoptosis, surviving gene for cell survival and the PCNA gene for cell proliferation. Now, the data, the actin has uniform bands throughout indicating equal loading of the dye and the BAX which is pro apoptotic has shown a higher or up regulation in the 7 combo wells and down regulation in the control wells whereas P53 which is a tumor suppressor protein has also shown up regulation in the 7 control and down regulation uh, uh, 7 combo and down regulation in the control wells. BCL2 which I said is an anti apoptotic gene and the reverse has been observed here. In case of 7 combo you see a down regulation and the control has been up regulated. In case of CD6, PCNA and Survivin all these genes they have been down regulated at the 7 combo treatment and up regulated at the control. The retinoblastoma which is again another tumor suppressor gene has been up regulated at the 7 combo and down regulated at the control. So, in conclusion I would like to say that my treatment of highly metastatic breast cancer cell line with the combination of 7 fighter compounds has indeed at their suboptimal levels caused a significant reduction in cell proliferation, motility and invasion. My future work would involve in vivo studies and genomic analysis. So, in conclusion I would like to thank my supervisor Dr. Allal, our collaborator in US Dr. Madhwa and the omics group for giving this wonderful platform and to all you guys for your patience and understanding. Thank you so much. The floor is open to questions. Questions for Dr. Soumya? Yeah. Very nice presentation. Thank you. Your results are very impressive actually black or white which is uh, very difficult to obtain all results. Uh, my question is, do you have any preliminary data of in vivo? Yes, in vivo, uh, in vivo we have a data of just two compounds that is resveratrol and indole 3 carbinol. This is my PH2 work and I am still doing it. So, hopefully next time inshallah. <laughs> any other questions? Yes. There is actually a publication if you want to go back and check indole 3 carbinol and resveratrol combination. Thank you very much for a really you. exciting presentation. Uh, how you are explaining the increase of both apoptotic and anti-apoptotic genes? Uh, increase? Yes, both uh, Bax and BCL. No, 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 no. See the, um, if you see the pro-apoptotic genes, yes. Bax has been upregulated in the control, yes. whereas BCL2, which is an anti-apoptotic gene, has been upregulated, uh, I mean downregulated in the control 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, there is a market difference. Sorry, I I I am sorry. 7 combination shows upregulation of BACs mm -hmm. and the 7 combination has shown a downregulation of BCL2. Is that clear? Okay, thank you. Pro apoptotic and uh, anti apoptotic. And it may be the next slide. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, uh, 
the two markets of proliferation, PCNA and mm -hmm. CDK. Okay. It is also. Uh, I, I it is down regulated in both proliferative CDK. And, and here is up regulated by CDK. Up regulated one, two, and seven, it's down regulated. Up regulated three, five, and six in the control. Okay, thank you. Is it okay?